Hello. Now, you probably do know me, but if you don't, I am Jill Tate, and I live in Northumberland in the United Kingdom, ooh, 10 miles from Scotland, actually. And I just thought, because Annette has been interviewing everybody, and me included, and she's not even halfway through what she's going to do, I know she isn't, I just thought it would be awfully nice for somebody to interview our Annette, Annette Tarpley. Because she's such a wonderful soul, it is her turn. So I am being the host, and you've got to bear with me because I've never done anything like this in my life before. But I am learning from our Annette. As I go along, I'm just going to blag my way through. So Annette, Annette Tarpley, welcome to my interview. Thank you. <laughs> I am Thank absolutely honoured to have you in my, you know, in my lounge tonight, as it were. Now, Annette... I really would like to start with just asking you to talk a little bit about yourself because not everybody will know where you live, you know. So please, Annette Tarpley. Okay, my name is Annette Tarpley. I am from the United States. Um, actually, I live in Virginia. I'm originally from Iowa, if anyone knows the United States, which is in the Midwest. I live here with my... Um, Sometimes dog. Um, I actually gave her to the people next door because I was gone so often, but now she lives with me on occasion. So it's my hairy daughter and me. And all my children, I have three children. They're grown. I have grandchildren and um, work full time as a nurse practitioner. And I've done that for quite some time. Work uh, board certified in family medicine. And um, then I also have done psychiatry and other things as well. And so I do that uh, about uh, five years ago. I wrote a poem when I was going through a divorce and kind of got back into poetry. I've written some poetic works and things through the years, not much. And um, that particular piece, I had lots of people uh, wanting me to get it published. And so I eventually did that. Uh, joined the Facebook community and I'm trying to think. Probably about maybe February or March of uh, 2020. No, yeah, 2020. Thank you. I was going to ask you that one. Hmm? Yeah, I think it was about that time. I'm trying to think. Um, so I think it was about that time, 2020, um, after um, I wanted to um, do more poetry type things. Mm -hmm. So I, I posted my first, you know, thing on a site and got some feedback and kind of the rest is history. I, it, you know, rapidly um, became well known in the poetry community. I've always and had a writer. That, sorry, sorry, was that on Facebook, that site that you published? You know, yeah, was it, was on on, it was on Facebook. Yeah. Okay, that's yeah. fine. Okay. Just want to clarify that. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I was on Facebook and I remember um, just being elated that people actually liked my work. I always knew that I had a writer in me and I always wanted to write. I mm -hmm. wanted to go into nursing or journalism and I, I picked um, uh, nursing. But mm -hmm. I've been told for years I could write. After my dad and brother died in 1980 and I was 17, I wrote a poem. Um, All right. And I had a hard time writing poems about anyone unless oh. it was most humusly or hummusly. They have to have died first and then the feelings See? come out. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's quite natural because yeah. emotions, that's when they really get well up strong. So I can, I can relate to that one, Annette. Yeah. So, so Annette. then I started, I started that. And then um, after I started, uh, well, I, I did that poem, is you know, read at their funeral or whatever. I hadn't really written anything. Wrote the one poem, went to a publisher. They said, how many, you know, you need like 40 to 60 poems for a good book. And so okay. then I, in about three to about three months, I wrote over a hundred poems mm -hmm. and started writing prolifically It's become my obsession. In about May of that same year, so that was March, April, May. So three mm -hmm. months down the road, um, mm -hmm. what happened was I was at a site and um, the founder of the site had said something publicly to me about my poem or, something mm -hmm. I could have changed or done differently on it. and um, Criticism, Annette. Was that criticism? Yeah, but it was, was kind it? of my first one. And I wasn't, oh, wow. too, wasn't too keen on it. So no. I guess probably I was a little embarrassed. 
So I um, right. decided. So, yeah, I decided to do my own site. Right. So that, that was beginning of poetry, part yeah. of poetry. Yeah, okay. it was about something okay, like May of thirty first, yeah, of two thousand twenty. Okay. Yeah, so, and then my first book was out in August of that year. And then the following year in February, Sofraz and I did our our book. Sofraz. So yeah. Sofraz was up there at the very beginning. Is this right? Uh, Sofraz. So this would have been, I think I met Sofraz and I really started talking maybe the fall <coughs> of 2020. Right. And then um, uh, I think we decided, we talked about doing a book together. And I think that might have been October, yeah, November. That. And Excellent. then by February, it was our, our book was published, which is Two Hearts. Yeah. And, Excellent. Uh, well, I, I have that one. I've had it for a while, yeah. and it is beautiful. So and the, well only one I have, and the only one I have is this one, which is my latest one. Whoops, look at it. <laughs> looks so yes, much better yes. when it's up. Yes, it was. Yes, it looks better now that it's the right way around. But yes, excellent. So that, yes. Yeah, that is my that first one. children's book, and that's Bird and Dragonfly, which I put my grandson Rhett as my co-author because I kind of put words past him and well it's nothing like a good children's book we need yeah. them don't we when we've got our grandchildren yeah. so Annette I want to start back in your school days look and I want to ask yes I want to ask did you read books then I mean I don't did you read did you read poetry but did you read books and if you did can you remember any of them do they stick in your mind now yeah um you know back in my school yeah i did read i read a lot more when before i went to college than i just read you know required books um that kind of ruined my reading leisurely reading uh but i did read some i mean i can remember i'm trying to remember um some that i read uh you know little house in the prairie those oh yes books. yes um I read Anne of Green Gables series, but that wasn't until oh, yes. later. Um, I did the Hobbit series, you know, I did that. Excellent. So you, so you were a reader. You can't I, say that you've probably progressed because you were a good reader. And I do believe readers, you know, can write if they read enough to practice, isn't it, really, Annette? Yeah. Can I just sneak in a couple of questions from Stuart Dan because we're on this subject, actually. And Stuart asks two questions. One of which is, Annette, what is your favourite poem you have written? Have you got a favourite? Yeah, I I do. I have. Oh. Uh, I have. I'm trying, you know, I, I do the ballad of Ned a lot. Yes, that is. Yeah, that is. Yeah. I know that one. So, so would you I, like I, to read that to us now, Annette? Is that convenient for you? I can do that um, off the top of my head. I thought you could. So please, Annette, yeah. The Ballad of Ned. Um, so, and this is what I want to write my novel on. I've started the first two chapters. I just haven't gotten past it. The Ballad of Ned, which is about bullying. Mm. Long ago, and oh so far away, in the deep throes of the South, lived a man named Ned, a gentle soul born with the deformity of the mouth. Through the years, it's been said that his mama sheltered him from harm. He grew up caring for the land and animals on Old Country Farm. Then the time came for him to go off to school, an atmosphere of unrest. His mama packed his lunch, walked him to the bus and whispered, mama loves you best. The children teased and taunted him. They were mean and downright cruel. He was bullied all day, but nothing was done. The school had no set rules. After school, he walked home alone, tears streaming down his face. When he finally got home, Mama wiped away his tears, greeting him with a warm embrace. She said, son, I declare, I taught you better. I told you you're covered with armor. You're protected in blood. You're a child of God. You're not merely the son of a farmer. The next day, he went to school. He stood up taller, a confident smile on his face. He went to the front of the class, approached the chalkboard and the writings he began to erase. With the chalk, he wrote, God is love. I am love. 
and my love I extend to you. Tears rush down the teacher's face, falling down the cheeks of students too. From that day forward, no one bullied the sweet, young, and disfigured Ned. He grew up with a life full of love and always remembered what his mother had said. That is absolutely, I mean, I've heard you read that a couple of times now, but that is absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Somebody mentions the divorce goes it's from the heart. It, actually, and I think that my my uh, divorce poem, I'm I'm gonna divorce poem is probably one of my stronger pieces because it um and I wasn't there yet, you know, because mm -hmm. I we just we were just separated. He was actually still physically in the house. Ooh, and, wow. and, and when I wrote it, I went to go stay with a girlfriend overnight out of town, and I. And I woke up in the middle of the night and was writing something on my phone. And I said, Ooh, I had written forever. And I said, listen to this. This is great. Wow. And whatever it was on my phone was gone. It was gone. I think I did one of those things. I've done that. Yes, you have fingers. done that several times. And how annoying. Yeah. Because sometimes you can't get it back. No, you can't. Not Sometimes it's I copy it. If I'm doing it on my phone, I copy as I go along sometimes. Annette, believe you me, I've done the very same thing myself. And I've been very upset. Yeah. So you know, on the way home, I still had thoughts going through my head. So I stopped mm -hmm. by at Walmart and got some paper and a pen. And then yes. on the way home, I just wrote as I went home. I'd stop every few miles, you know, right Yes, now. I do. That is so well, about yes. an hour and a half going home, I wrote yes. down this poem. But it's a very strong poem. It's, it's made um, many people cry. Well, <laughs> I mean, I've had women cry. I've had men cry. I had a homeless man cry. Well, um, before we go up there. Be sure I'm going to ask you to read that very poem, right? Okay, because the viewers would love to, he to, re to hear you read that one. Okay, another little question from Stuart, just the last one, but Stuart asks, so Annette, do you have a favourite poem by another poet? Do I have a favourite poet? Yes. And yes, who is your favourite poet? Um... I always liked Longfellow um, yeah. growing up. I'm not sure why, but I just remembered a lot of his poetry I really liked. Um, since then, I have, um, being in the poetry community, I've actually bought some uh, poetry books and read through some stuff and, you know, mm -hmm. some of the classics and stuff. Not a lot of it. Um, I kind of, I'm kind of funny about reading poetry in that the respect of, Mm -hmm. And I, it, it, it's either going to help me or hurt me. So I, okay. I'm afraid that I'm going to taint myself too much. I don't want to adopt someone else's style. Yes. Okay. Because you've got your own style. So you don't want to change that really. That's I don't, I don't mind changing things style. up, but I want it to come from my own mind and not be yes. heavily influenced by something. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So moving from the world of poetry, which is very, very similar, we're going to go to the world of music. Are you very musical, Annette? Huh? Do you appreciate mu music, Annette? I Can love music. Annette? Of course. Okay. So, Annette, what kind of music does Annette listen to? Is it I jazz? Listen. Is it pop? I is, it, you know, is it country? I listen to all kinds of music. So, um, okay. I'm, I'm not uh, fond of rap or opera. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, I have a great love for most genres. I mean, I love classical. I mean, yes. I love I, I love some country. I don't like the older country. I'm a newer country person. I like, you know, Keith Urban. Oh, I love Keith Urban. That kind of stuff, oh, yes. you know. Oh, um, I, I, I like yeah, jazz. Really. Yeah, yes. I like jazz, like the blues. I mean, I like all kinds of music. I've And, my, and bluegrass. I grew up with bluegrass. Do you sing yeah. that? Do you ever try and sing them in the shower or when you're driving the car? Are no, you a singer? I can't sing. No. Yeah, I've heard you sing actually once before. You and I had a duet. And you know, I think it was two little boys when I remember rightly. Two little boys. That's right, two little boys. But you sang a different tune to me. You yeah, see, that's America. Yeah. But we, we managed. We, we, you know, we waddled our way through it. Mm -hmm. So we've discovered that you listen to music. What about when you're in your car, Annette? Do you play the radio in your car? Um, I do. I've been playing a little less because I've been doing a lot of audible books when I've been traveling. Oh, I've been oh, traveling. Really? Yeah, I've oh, been traveling oh. longer periods of time. So I've been mm -hmm. really getting into a lot of audible books. Okay. Um, 
And the reason why I'm doing that is because I want to write a novel. And so I'm trying yes. to, you know what I mean? Okay, right. yes. Right. So that's in the off. And this novel will, you just need to watch this space on that novel, I, I believe. Yes. Because that's yeah. in your heart now, isn't it, really? You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So, okay. What about the TV? Does Annette watch the TV? What sort of thing does she like? Very rarely. You know when I watch TV? Mm -hmm. About the only time I watch TV is when I eat. All right. So if you're sat eating if on I'm the sitting screen, down, so I watch maybe 20 minutes to 30 minutes a day, and that's about oh, it. Oh, not a lot. So what if, about even, the even if I'm in the car? Because when I was traveling, I'd have to eat a lot of, unfortunately, fast food. And I would sit there on, and, on my Hulu, on my phone, and watch <laughs> something. But right, only, okay. only for so the. You're not the one for the dramas. You don't watch the dramas, you know, like a weekly drama? Well, I take that back in that I recently have watched a couple of movies and trying to I watched the newest Downton Abbey one. Oh yes, no, I have um, seen the latest film. It's lovely. So I like a lot of like if I want to watch a movie, I like so that. So period type. dramas, would you say? You like a period drama? I like the British stuff. I like Oh, I like there them. we go. They are very, they, I have to say they are very good, even if I'm British. I'm you know, yeah. I'm just saying they're very good. Good actresses, good actors. So, Annette, I'm going to move straight away from that sort of lifestyle. And I'm going to ask you something that's quite personal, but you know what? I'm intrigued. So, if someone was to take you out on a dream date, girl, can you hear that? A dream date? What would be your ideal of a dream date? Would it be a picnic in the park, perhaps, on a lovely sunny day with the blue skies? Or perhaps you, you would like to get dressed up to impress and go and wine and dine and oh you know this guy has plenty of money he can treat you right so what's you uh and that's ideal of a, of a perfect date a night out to remember well i'm a romantic so i like surprises and mm -hmm. i like um I like when a guy brings me flowers. <laughs> oh, lovely. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, I like surprises, but I'm very much romantic. So to me, something intimate, like a picnic somewhere outside lovely. on a beautiful day by a pond or, yes. you know, something like that is to me very romantic. Um, uh, or And then maybe even, you know, some live music or if there's mountains. I'm kind of more of a mountain meadow person than I am a... Um, what? Beach not the beach side. Oh, right. So you, what about though, Annette? I'm just going to put you in this scene where there's this guy that's obviously dotes on you. He, he loves Annette. And you know what? You love him. And you're sat on the beach and there's only you and this man on the island and there's nobody around and the sun's just ready to set. Surely that would interest Annette. Does that sound nice, Annette? That sounds nice. Mm. Um, and I like the thought of a beach. Um, but I can tell you, I've only seen the ocean twice. You've never. And I've only been to the beach twice, oh, and okay. um, and I liked it, but I oh, wasn't yeah. overly impressed with it. Oh, Annette, you have to come um, to England, girl. Yeah. You could give me a mountain with a rushing creek near it, okay, and I, I'm yes. happier. Beautiful, with all yeah. the sounds and the birds and the bees and the yeah. butterflies. I'm the, there. The ocean to we me, are there, I you never, and I. I remember the first time when I went to the beach, I woke up in the middle of the night and I thought, what is that noise? Oh, the ocean? Was it the ocean? It was the ocean. Oh, was, wow. No. Just take a I minute. Mean, mean, yeah, I almost drowned yeah. when I was little. Oh, well, there you go. That That's a total... I can understand that having a yeah. laugh. So to me, that is just a very powerful thing. It and is a powerful lot of, thing. There's a lot of stuff in the ocean. You don't mess with the water, but I mean, it is beautiful. It's a big toilet. It's, <laughs> it's a big face and a big bath. <laughs> right, Annette. Okay. So we're moving on to the seasons now, Annette. Obviously, I'm going to start now because it's our autumn. Okay. England, it's autumnal. And I want to ask you personally, what does Annette like about the autumn season? The color changes. Yes. The color changes, the smell. Yes. The with the, the leaves and the you know just that fall smell absolutely that, that smell the earthy smell and like a bonfire absolutely but beautiful yes I love the smells I I so I love the autumn and I love the change in the color of leaves but I get very sad when they all fall and then the trees are oh. naked 
but they grow again. That's just like I know, but I just oh, know it's going to be months. So they're going to be making okay. things. What about the winter time and Christmas and and all that? What do you love? Is that nice? Do you love that? Well, I like um, snow from the inside. Mm-hmm. I'm from I'm from Iowa, so I dealt with a lot of snow when I was growing mm-hmm. up, and um, mm-hmm. so I've had enough snow for a lifetime here. The snow. Ah. The the winters are very mild here and I don't have a garage. So to me, the winter is just a bunch of inconveniences. I'm a girl. Don't have a lawn and auto maintenance guy here. So I right. have to worry. I have to worry about all that. So it's it's pretty hard work. The snow for for you. Obviously. Yeah. And I can drive well in it. Everybody else. Okay. Nobody here knows. Do you have snow tires? Do you huh? have snow tires on your car? Do you have special tires? Um, have they, snow tires? They, well, they're kind of like all weather. All right. Kind of. Okay. All weathered. Okay. Right. So what about Christmas time? What would Annette do? Christmas is coming. What would Annette do? Where do you spend your Christmas time? Is it with your family? Is it with your loved ones? Hmm. Well, last Mm -hmm. Christmas, we got my house all decorated. I usually decorate it up every year. I do decorate it up every year. And no one came by. Oh, Annette, please (laughs) don't say that can't be true. Oh, Annette, that, do you know what? I'm sad. I touched on that subject now because that's very sad. Well, hopefully this year will be different for you and you no. will have company. You don't say no. Never say never, girl. You don't know. I'll put my I've spent the last, I've spent the last uh, five, four or five Christmases alone. Christmas oh, Day. Annette, bless. Well, that's not fair. That shouldn't be so. Right, okay. I'm going to move off Christmas because <laughs> I'm not happy with that answer at all. So... <laughs> Right, Annette, this is something different for you, I think. Do you believe personally that people with a poetic talent, as yourself, okay, and other artists out there poetically, do you think that they have different qualities to people that don't write and that can't, you know, don't use imagination, say? Do you think they're different? Do you feel different as a person? Repeat that question because I'm not sure I entirely understood. Right. Well, do you know that you 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 are an, ex, an excellent writer? That's just what you are. You know that you write poetry, but you can also write a book. You could. So people that haven't got that ability, okay? Joe blogs mm-hmm. on the street. He's walking along. He's never wrote. He doesn't read, and he's never wrote probably a couple of lines at school. And that's. Do you feel any different? Do you think they're different to people that do write? Do you think they stand out to more people that write? Um, Obviously, they use, they, use, they use their imagination more. Yeah, I think that um, writing is an art. And the talent, just as, you know, being an artist or yes. a musician or, you know, anything else. So I think it's an art form and not everybody's gifted with it. Right. I'm not, not a musician. I'm not a singer. You know, I, um, I, I'm not an be. artist. I have creativity and I can make, you know, do things, but I'm not, I, you give me a paintbrush, I can't paint. No, so I think, nice. yeah, so I think, it's a, a I think it's a gift, so, at least to do it well. Okay. I think the really, you know, I think anybody could do some writing if they really wanted to. If they really wanted to. But I think the people who do it remarkably well have a gift or talent. Okay. And the cons stop using that talent actually when they start they find it hard to stop i'm thinking about myself and you also yes yeah. so it is a gift so what about back in your school days then what subjects did you what subjects were you good at in it obviously you know got higher marks than others what were those what were the subjects that you excelled at english <laughs> naturally I, yes, I, I did english, yeah. english was a a strong subject for me um a science i think was fairly decent the thing about my childhood and my upbringing or my schooling Mm -hmm. at at least my childhood years before i went off to college is it's very um it's very segmented it's bits and pieces i went to 10 schools two of them twice i did divorce families it, I always right. felt like I never had a beginning or an ending of a okay. subject matter. Okay, we're moving around a lot. I, can I always felt like I was lost, you know. That, that's I'm so actually, well. I'm actually surprised I was smart enough to go to college and to get a master's. You know what I mean? Excellent. I just yes. felt like I had this very botched education, and that I always 
felt like I was trying to figure out what I was doing. Did you have anybody to influence you and encourage you at that early age, Annette? Who would do that? My dad was always my cheerleader. You can do anything you want to do, you know. Um, um, And, you know, math was never a good uh, subject for me. And it kept me because I I think it was because it was so botched, you know. Mm -hmm. And, um, but, and my grades were always kind of bad in math. And I'd come home, my dad would say, can you add? Yep. Subtract? Yep. Multiply? Yep. Divide? Yep. You're good then. That's all you need to know. <laughs> uh, well, that's a fact. He's probably right in this big world. Yeah. He's probably got the nutshell. He's yeah, but right. I think writing was always, um, or English was probably always my big subject matter that I could excel in. Yeah. So what about, were you shy or were you confident at school? Did Were you nervous at all in it? Was there anything that really made you nervous? Um, I think I've always been somewhat of an outgoing person to a certain extent. But um, in school, I was bullied a lot because I was always the new kid. Remember, I went to lots of different Oh, you schools. did, yes, yes, moving around so a lot. you're the new kid, you oh, come wow, in, yes. you don't fit in, you're always trying to fit in, it's very difficult, so I was bullied a lot. And a lot of times the boys, the attention would come to me, you know, the boys, because I was a new girl on the block, I guess, so. So you were actually like bullied them. yourself in it? You were yeah. bullied, is that, where, is that where that poem came from? The ballad of uh, men? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm, Sure, a lot of it came from, uh, yeah, me being bullied. I was, I was, you know, kicked and spit and spat and hair Who pulled. You? you know, um, yeah, me. People, people trying to break into my house to beat me up. And, never. Yeah. That's horrendous, it? I um, never knew anything. I mean, like lots that. of stuff like that. I, I'm sure there was other stuff too, but um, so I always uh, felt, and because, and I, and I wouldn't fight back. So no, you know, right. I was, so, I was so obviously you have, but you have had nerves, and yeah. I don't know. You must have lost your confidence through all of this, and it. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. something, something, somehow you probably have become a much stronger person through it all. I'm sure that's what's happened, and given you the strength to do what, what you do. Yeah, what does tell us makes us stronger? Well, right? yes, exactly. That's a good old, and it's right, isn't it? And when so people tell me I can't do something, then that makes me want to do it. Yes, so you've got the determination me. then, so haven't prove you? Them wrong, prove them wrong, yeah. yeah. That's it, that's my attitude in a nutshell. Okay, so is there anybody else that's through the generations or in your immediate family that shares your talent in it? Is there a writer in your family? No, there sure isn't. No. I'm it. I'm, I'm, I'm the, I'm the anomaly. Place. I'm the anomaly in my family. Um, I right, and okay. I think that you know, like my grandmother who passed was proud of me. I have a couple aunts who are my big fans. My aunt Mary Wingert, and then my aunt um, who I visited made a little video in. My aunt Claudine, who is my mother's sister, right, she's uh-huh. a really big fan of mine. But other than that. Um, no, I, I don't get a lot of support from my family as far as my writing is concerned. Probably because I'm a little bit obsessed with it, so they get tired of it. Well, we are obsessive. Writers are obsessive, yeah. but that's not a bad quality because look at the, I mean, look at the joy we bring to people. That's what I say. Yeah. So, did anybody encourage you apart from? Is there anybody encouraging you today apart from on the platforms? I mean, does people encourage you now? Anybody in your family? No, I mean, other than the ones mentioned, but I mean, it's not like I talk to him about it constantly or I don't really no, I don't have like any, I mean, other than in the, within the poetry community, of course, yes. I have people who are supportive to me, but outside of the poetry community, um, none. And I have in the dating world, I've had a hard time because um, unless I can find somebody that really supports that. Mm, that's um, difficult, I, I would imagine. And, because... and almost nobody did. I had maybe a couple that. Have you got um, any siblings? Have you got any sisters or brothers in it? Um, I have a sister. We're oh. not so close anymore. Right. Okay. Um, I have a half brother, and he lives far away. We don't talk a lot. Okay. And then I have a brother who died with my dad in the plane oh, crash. Okay. Sorry about that, Annette. Yeah. I'm very sorry. Okay. That's okay. So, Annette, what things does 
Annette dislike. You know, just little thing. It can be a little thing, being late for something and you're waiting, hanging around on them coming, thinking something like that, or the weather perhaps. What sort of things does Annette not like? What really annoys Annette? Um, I think um, people who are not kind and anno annoys me. People who do not treat other people with respect annoys me. Um, I think that we as humans should give respect and in return we deserve yeah. to receive respect. Definitely, yes. Uh -huh. So I think that um, just treating each other with love and respect is a big thing with me. That's that's probably you know a beautiful answer. And could you live without your poetry, do you think, Annette? What happens what happens if you couldn't write, for instance? What would happen? What would what would you do? You know, I've thought about that a little bit. Um, in the respect that now that I'm getting older, I think, well, what, mm. what if tomorrow or if I had a stroke and I yes. you know, or, or, you, you, know, know I, you just don't know what's gonna happen in life. No, and no, I, no, not around the corner, no. Yeah, and I thought, how horrid would that be for me? I mean, it would be horrible. Um, now, having said that. That's your life. That's our life now. Yeah, I recently met somebody in a nursing home. For some reason, I went into her room. This was just a few months ago. Mm -hmm. And she was had some kind of deformity or uh, something that physically made her, you know, very uh, yeah. crippled. So custom thing, yes. Uh -huh. But on her wall were all kinds of covers. She's written all kinds of books. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, um, heavens so above. Think, yeah. So I think if I had my mental faculties about me, somehow I'd get it across. You know. Wow. So, uh, yeah, but po if I lost that. So you um, will always write, Annette, do you think? Till the day that, will you, do you think you'll always write? As long yeah. as you're able, you will write. I think that I will. Even even like with my children, you know, I've always like written more poetic things. Like my latest thing that I wrote to my son was very sweet. When he graduated a year ago, it was kind of a poetic. I kind of, the birthdays and things. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I've always, um, it's always been a big part of me to express myself that way for my loved ones. Yeah. I think it's about time for another poem. Do you, Annette? Would you like to read another poem? What about that one, you know, that I asked you to read? You Broken know? Dreams? Yes, please. Read I'm going to try to do it off the top of my head. I used to know well, it very, very well because I don't have the book here. Um, no, but well, I, I'll just try. If I falter, forgive me. Um, we will. I have to think about how it starts now. It's called Broken Dreams. Mm -hmm. A love that flourished. So fresh and new, a man who promised to always be true. My heart, I gave you to hold and to keep in arms that once held me as I went to sleep. Lips, they merged, holding steadfast at night. The morning then dawned and the Sunday grow bright. You promised me you would love me for a lifetime, you said, our vows now spoken with a life together had. The love and the marriage was so wonderful and bliss, but soon... I realized something was amiss. You grew so cold in your touch I no longer felt. And a love once true soon began to melt. A flame that burned so hot and true was now growing dimmer and no longer grew. My heart you held once near your own. The house where we live is no longer home. Soon I watched as you grew distant and cold and wondered, will we be together as we grow old? Promises once spoken, love whispered in my ear, come a little bit closer and let me make this clear. You are no longer a man I yearn for. You are not a man which should love and adore. True love and respect were never part of the game, and once I realized this, things were never the same. A man of honor, integrity, and truth you claimed to be. But then your true color showed through, and I began to see. None of these things ever were you. It was a picture you painted and a fairy tale you drew. The love and the marriage can no longer be saved. Love and time, these things you no longer gave. The marriage was a sham and I could no longer see. The man who once loved me was to longer be. My beauty, you indicated, was a passing thing after promising me forever and always with a ring. Not as pretty, you said, that is me. How superficial and shallow can you really be? 
It's the exterior you look at, not the person within. And then say goodbye to us as you widen your grin. Through the years, you methodically tried to lessen my worth. But I'm so very strong and I'm giving birth to the me that I lost to once walk this earth. And to me it will be that I soon will unleash a woman whose inadequate self-esteem will now cease. Never again will I allow another man who dictates, another man who withdraws affection or alienates. I will no longer mourn that man I thought you to be, for you're never that man this now I see. A strong woman I am with beauty and grace, a woman who loves and looks beyond the face. Never again will I allow another man to define the wonderful person I am who's faithful, true, and kind. Ideals, they once existed. They turned to broken dreams. A life appeared shattered, but it is not what it seems. I go forth with confidence in the midst of new dreams, dreams full of happiness, life that starts anew, embracing each day and following it through to live my life as I wish from now on. The key factor being that you are now gone. That is wow. it. Wow. I don't know how you did that, girl. That was absolutely tremendous. Oh, thank you. Thank Beautiful. You. I could not do that. You are that amazing. was my therapy for you are an amazing <laughs> lady. There you go. Or amazing lass, as I always call you, my lass. So Annette, we're gonna leave your childhood years now. And I want you know, you started pop. We know why you started pop. You told us why, what was in your mind. So you started off and saw Fraz was there at the beginning. Was that right? Yes. Yeah, he came in, uh, yeah, about six months after I came to the community. Okay. So you went to the loan with pop initially. You started the loan, didn't you? Yes. I your... started, uh, yeah, I started alone with pop. And mm -hmm. I think I got maybe just a few hundred people. And then I had um, someone that came on to ask me if they wanted, you know, to come on. So, yeah. Okay. So, okay. So what qualities, when you were just early stages and you were picking your, you know, helpers, if you like, your team that you want to help you along with pop, what yeah. qualities, were you looking for different qualities and different people or similar qualities? What were you looking for? The Were you looking for the poetry? Mm -hmm. Um, How did you know who to pick for your admins and your moderators? Well, the early days, I didn't pick well always. So, um, in other words, I, I learned over a period of time because the thing is, is that, um, you know, I, I, I've had dead weight in my, you know, mm -hmm. uh, form. And if I have it for too long, I usually get rid of it. It's very important for me to, for the admin to be active. Um, hmm? And some are much more visible, like you and Ron uh, are very well known. I enjoy it because I enjoy it. That's why. Yeah. I love yeah. what, I love but you're what also well known in the community because you're up front and you're. Because you know, I love doing community. what I'm doing. We've, you yeah. know, we touched on that before. If you, if you have a passion, a passion of poetry, if we have a passion about something, well, again, that's the word passion. You do, you do, you put your heart and soul into it. And that's yeah. what I've done with poet, with passion, with passion of poetry. And it will always, I hope it always grows from strength yeah. to strength. Will I have anything to do with it? And you, because, you know, you it's it's just beautiful. Yeah. So I usually pick people. people who I think, now I pick people who I think um, I just have a feeling about that will fit in. Because as you know, we have a very tight-knit uh, uh, administrative group. And I think we work well together and respect each other. And there's a, a genuine uh, sense of family within our group. And so I, I think I really look for someone to mesh with that okay. and um, uh, to be, uh, you know, engaging with each other. That's important. Yes, that it happens, yes. It does. Yeah. And, it's uh, magically masterful. As my yeah. husband calls everything masterful, it's magically masterful, I would say. <laughs> you can relate to that. Almost like Lucky Charms is magically. Isn't doing. it? Yes. <laughs> Our Lucky Charm, Pop. So are you satisfied with Pop today? Or do you think it can get better as it goes along? Is there much, you know, do you think there'll be many changes in it through, you know, say mm -hmm. another five years time? I would imagine it's still going to, you know, from strength to strength. Mm -hmm. Are you satisfied I, with it now? 
I think that um, Alan Johnson and I had a long discussion about this. And, um, uh, you know, we have 28,000 members, but how many of those are active? Yes, uh uh-huh. You know, a very small percentage. But this is not something that's, you know, unique to pop. It's everywhere, you know, amongst the poetry communities, all the sites. That there's and on all of them, there's a small percentage. And the bigger you get, of course, then the less percentage you have of act, actually active members. But I think that, um, you know, I think that there are people who enjoy poetry. Yes. And 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 this is what I think, and and this is why I think the activity or the the you know, and then I think that there are those who it's their passion and their drive, yeah. and I think that those are the people who are very active in it, and not everybody you know you have others who appreciate it, but then you have yes. others who are you know that you is the readers, passion. don't you? Yeah. you and those the are readers. people who are active. Yes, you have the readers, and you have the writers, and then you know, do it's true. A lot of writers don't necessarily read. A lot of other stuff right. because they're so busy right. writing, aren't they? You know, everything right. they get inspired all the time, so they're just writing all the time. So they don't necessarily get to read as much yeah. as probably what they should. I know I'm guilty of that one. Yeah, and I think if I have if, what I would like to see happen in pop, and including myself, because my schedule is, you know, often very crazy. I mean, recently I had a job where I was working 92 hours and, you know, seven yeah. days. Ridiculous. Oh, so, um, yeah. So to me, it's um, time is of the essence. I don't have a lot of it. And so um, I don't always get the opportunity to um, really have the feedback. So all those people who do give feedback more than just a like you, and I'm so guilty of doing it um, because of my time crunch. Um, but I really, really appreciate the people that, that take the time to make comments and to really uh, – tell you what it is about your poem that stood out, you know. Mm-hmm. So kudos yes. to people, and I hope to get better at it myself. Yeah. My husband's just giving me a fright outside there, everybody. That was not needed. He deliberately went to the window and gave me a fright. Right, we'll get back to the where we were. So, Annette, how would you describe Annette Tarpley to a perfect stranger? Um, I think I would say that she is a very um, kind and compassionate and uh, loving person who um, likes to see the best and likes to help people see the best in themselves and to, po- and to point out that they have worth and purpose. Yes, Yes. But isn't always good about doing that for herself. And I think that's kind of a thing that we all do ourselves. We, we're good about seeing the, the best in other people, yes, but, other people, but you not, know, not always us. ourselves. Yeah. Yes, that's yeah. A, such a shame. So what are your weaknesses only in your eyes, though? I mean, what are your weaknesses, would you say? I mean, I know you're obsessive yeah. because you and I share that. We're both guilty of being very obsessive. As yeah. today, this is magically just happened out of the blue really today hasn't it Annette? so yeah, what are your weaknesses? um i'm i'm good at procrastinating um on things that i i on things that i'm not looking forward to doing um other things that i am i i can get done in a timely manner but there's certain things i procrastinate on and put off uh, I, i'd rather write a poem then you know yes well like, yes we all you know, a bunch of charts that are sitting there waiting for me to yes do. yes yeah. and it does it does cause problems i would imagine in your yeah. lifestyle you've got to get them done eventually yes. yeah i think that and i i need to um really spend more find a way to spend more time with my family um on my off moments sometimes it's difficult because everybody's so busy and has lives of their yeah. own and they have this to do and that to do and just kind of choreographing it but I want to become, uh, you know, more present in their lives. So. so, apart from your family, which you've already just said, you want to be more part of your family's life. What are your dreams and aspirations? What What would you like to do in the future? If you had, you know, again, you ask everybody this, a bucket list. What's on your three on the bucket list? What's top of your bucket list, Annette Tarpley? Um... I would like to retire, but I don't think I don't see that happening. 
Um, so that's one of them. Um, Again, I would like, we'll I would like you. Just, yeah, I would like to just write and yeah. um, have that luxury. Um, I would like to be able to travel and see yes. places and do things like that. See people, in it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, so those are things that I'd like to do. I really want to finish, you know, the Ballad of Ned, the novel. Yes. Yes. Because I, 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 in my mind, I see it. I see it on the screen. I have. There's a lot more to the story. Mm -hmm. And I actually, I actually recently this last week pitched it to a. Um, a screenplay writer. Oh, wow. Yes. And, um, wow. Look forward to he seeing was, that. He was know. very interested. So I told him the storyline. He was very oh, wow. interested and he wanted to take it on, but I don't have $11,000. Oh, wow. So is that what it was going to cost? Wow. Well, yeah. And, to, you know, to be perfectly so honest. You need, yeah. um, so you need to win the lottery and then that's good. Yeah. Just it probably isn't that much really for a screenplay, right? They're taking your, you know, work what and... New? You know, but it would but, be marvelous. A very story would just come to life, wouldn't it? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Heavens, that would be beautiful. So, so could you achieve? Do you think it would be achievable in your your wildest dreams? Would it be achievable? Again, eleven thousand dollars. That's one of them. We would need that, to, you know, for to finish this. So, your dreams, my dreams, dreams in your head, are they achievable? Do you think you could follow your dreams? I think I'll try to follow my dreams. Um, I don't know how my my thing is. It's not always um, what you know; it's who you know, and and making it come into fruition. That's true. So um, you know, I have had a lot of a couple of agents bugging me about my first book, The Passion of Poetry, and and wanting to buy rights. And Simon Schuster called me and wanted to buy rights to it, but I really don't know if I want to sell rights to it because I don't. I mm. I think my next book is going to be so much better my writing has improved so much since then practice makes perfect um, yeah. but i mean i'm flattered so i mean i guess i would like someday to go into a bookstore and see my books yes now that would be a perfect you know dream. going to the airport oh, waiting, wow. for, waiting, yeah. on the pl waiting for the plane in the bookstore there they have the oh, wow. top selling you know ones on the oh, shelf yes. and I like the mind to that be there be absolutely everybody's wildest dream that'd be beautiful yeah. and i hope that happens someday in the net i don't see why it can't with you because you're absolutely perfection with your writing Everybody. well my problem is at the you time i don't have the time yeah but you've wrote so much stuff out there that you know somebody could see it one day and put it there at the top. It could happen. It's not it really happen. the wildest dream. So, I'm so, and then I'm do so you, much for it. Yeah. Do you yeah. lie in night time when you're lying? I know you don't sleep sometimes very well. Please go away, husband. Do I you don't lie sleep in your very bed? Well. I don't sleep very well. Um, I have an issue. I have a sleep study actually coming up, I believe, next week. My third sleep study, I already know how it's going to turn out. So, yeah, I have a, a real problem. I have uh, sleep apnea. I have uh, insomnia because I think I'm scared to go to sleep. Yes. I have, I, have, I have narcolepsy because of it. So I can just sit there and, and then it's not off. And so. would you, couldn't you poetry at any point at that? Would you think about poetry, you know, when you're not sleeping? Have you been known to get up and write a couple of lines down and go back to bed? I, I'm more well known for writing while I'm sitting up and then waking up and then writing some more and then waking up and then writing some more. And then right. Okay. <laughs> so you can continue. So yeah, you can I'm, actually I'm, forget about something and go back to it in the net. That's yeah. interesting. Because yeah. when I start something, I more or less have to finish it there and then. I don't really go back to it. I just do it and that's it. And then I move on to something else. Yeah. Yeah, but when I do that and I'm sleeping and I have my finger on, that's when I lose everything. Yeah. Wow. So you've actually lost. Your... God, that's, that's amazing. amazing. So, wow. I was just going, my last question was, have you ever woke up and felt the urge to write? And I think you've just answered it. You're asleep and you're writing, aren't you, really? Um, <laughs> you know, it's funny because well, I'm not a morning person. Um, I'm trying to think of, but I, I write it. I can write it all different times of day. But typically, morning is probably not my prime time to write. Although, early in the morning when I'm still awake, if I'm up at 2 or 3 o'clock. I like to write I, first you know. thing of the morning. I must admit that's the yeah. first thing I do. I always just wake up and then 
it's me time always and I always at least write one poem when I'm lying in my bed and I always put three on passionate poetry as you know religiously because I'm a creature of habit and I do everything in threes where is your husband anyway you should introduce well him. well he's had a drink you see in it he's had his oh. drink it's, it's it's Saturday night he has his wine on Friday night after tea time and then Saturday again you know and then of course we stayed in tonight we had a bit of a takeaway so we had the tea on the table and then oh. I was all getting myself prepared for you you know I'm I'm drinking well it's well, not I've got the water in it. Yeah, it's water. It's not vodka. <laughs> so, of course, when Robert gets a wine, you know, and he's probably nearly had a bottle of wine, he'll gain confidence. You see, I don't need a wine to gain <laughs> confidence. I, I'm not a confident person, mind, yeah. but I don't need a drink to get me talking to people. Or, you know, so he's obviously come outside my conservatory door here where it's pitch black, the door's locked, and he's banged on the on the window to try and you know you know so he's now in the house and he's away in the other room because i kind of put my finger like that tell them to go away <laughs> out of the road so that's that's all so I've, I've asked all the questions on my little ipod now so we are generally talking so is there anything that you think that you would like to get across there because we've got an i can't see who's there but i know there will be people watching us Probably mm. questions. I can't see them. I would imagine there's... Uh, somebody old... said, I wanted to know what grocery store do I shop at? <laughs> well, I think um, you should answer that one, Annette. I would like to. I would like to. In fact, I wanted to this weekend go to Fresh Market because they have some marvelous food there. Um, but I, I don't even go the there market. because... They're, yeah, they're usually more expensive. And they have like imported things and things that regular right. grocery stores Different don't have. Things, yes. But I rarely go there. Um, right. okay. But usually it's a local Kroger, and I actually had del groceries delivered today. Yes. Um, not soon before this. And so I don't even go to the grocery store anymore, very rarely. I usually do it on my thing, and they deliver it here. I don't even go. And, now um, I know you like lobster because we discussed this the other night. I know you love lobster just like me. Yeah. How how odd I is that? To order, I forgot to order some lobster. <laughs> Have you? Well, it's difficult for me. Although I'm a fisherman's daughter, I live in the countryside. So I'm just not, you know, it's difficult for me to get lobster unless I go to Jersey on the Channel Islands. And believe you me, I have about 10 in a week when I'm over there. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. I, I love, love lobster. Them. So mm. do I. I know. I love it. Great. What else do you like to eat? What it says Greg. Like it says Greg Edsel said that. I'm sorry. What did you say? Do you like chocolate, for instance? Well, I think if you don't like chocolate, I always <laughs> say I always say that you're un-American, but I guess it goes for other countries too. But um, do you like yeah. dark chocolate? Do you like milk chocolate? What Not a fan it? of dark chocolate. Oh, um, I'm and quite like it should be. It has. I like milk chocolate better. Okay, right. Okay, Cadbury's. You get Cadbury's over in America. Cadbury's. Yeah, the Cadbury's. I'm yeah. like the eggs. Cadbury eggs. Yeah, but even just the Cadbury's bar of chocolate with the whole nuts in and things like. Do you yeah, not I haven't that really had that. I know the eggs. I don't like. It's a little bit too sweet. No, they're too sweet. Yes, they're more yeah. for children. I would say. Yes. So, what um, other things do you like? Like What's a diet that has chocolate. What's diet. your favorite? What's your favorite drink? Um, alcoholic beverage. You mean? Well, either. What's your favorite alcoholic drink? If you went to a bar, what would you like? A margarita. Oh, nice. Yes, right. Uh, okay. Even a strawberry margarita might even be better, but I like a margarita. I don't drink very often, only socially. No. So yes. I never drink at home or if I'm stressed. So I only, but if I go eat Mexican, I want a margarita. I just right, go okay. That goes along with your Mexican. So you yeah. like eating Mexican then? Yes. Yeah. So you like you like dining out when you can? Yes. Yeah. So you would. What? Where else would you go? Do you like a Chinese? Say, would you like a Chinese food? I or like Indian? Chinese food. We have a good yes. one near us. I like uh, cashew chicken and general oh, nice. yeah. and Then the hot and sour soup and the little. Gonna make our, yeah, we're going to make ourselves hungry here, you and I, Annette, yeah. talking about food. Yes. Dear me. Are there any more questions on the, on our viewers list there, Annette? Because again, I can't read uh, anything. Let's see. Grocery store. Greg Etzel's here. Uh, Greg hello, says hello, no, Greg. no to stop and shop where you live. 
Craig says, uh, no, stop and shop where you live. I don't like shopping for groceries because I tend to buy more than I should. So uh -huh. I tend to, um, uh, in fact, I'm, I'm good at shopping. I'm dangerous in stores. I can go after one thing and get yeah. 20. And we're, like, we're, um, we're all the same though. That's what yeah. happens. Yes. So I'm uh, now, now I miss out on a lot because there's stuff I don't see. So if I go to the grocery store and I think, oh wow, you know, look at that, or you know, yes. But um, so generally I'm. Let's see. It says I. Let me go up here in ways. Hi, ladies. See, I don't know who most of these people are. Divorce does go with poetic juices. Or, uh, get poetic juices flowing. We love your work in that. Love to see you being interviewed. Bravo, Jill. Thank you. Um, yes. Says something that was quite the catalyst. And when did you get involved with Pop, Jill? So they want to know when you got involved. Ooh, when I got involved with Pop, well, okay. Well, Pratiba. And you know, I am saying, you know Pratiba. Yeah. How, how do you say her surname again? Pratiba. Yeah. Uh, I bet I didn't know that that's how you got into Pop, I guess. I well, it was. Did you not know that? Yeah. Pratiba, you'll love this. I was on Cosmo Funnel for a, probably a couple of years. You know, every, anybody know Cosmo Funnel here? Well, I was on there. Oh, and no. I used to, well, Williams, Jay was on there. He oh. was a huge writer on there. He wrote hundreds of poems like me on Cosmo Funnel. Mm -hmm. And I kept going, I was always on Cosmo Funnel. It was a heavy, you know, planting them more is than it, Is it still there? Is it still platform? Cosmo Funnel, yes, yes. But sometimes it what dies is it on? a bit. Eh? What is what just form online? Is just a platform online. Okay. Cosmofunnel.com. So I think it's American actually. So I was on there and I met an awful lot of people on Cosmo Funnel that I know today. I e Greg Etzel. Greg Etzel mm. and I, oh heavens, we've always been friends on Cosmo Funnel. So I was in there and then I think I, I must have known Pratiba in there because I wasn't in many groups. It was only Cosmo Funnel that comes to my mind. And Pratiba, bless her, private messaged me one day out of the blue. I think it was an email, in fact. And, you know, I knew of her. You know, I haven't talked to her or anything, but I thought she was a nice girl. And she said to me, can you go? Do you not fancy? Will you come in to pop Passion of Poetry? And she mm. sent me the link because I'm rather oh. lazy, you know. So Pratiba sent me the link. Well, bless Pratiba. Well, he, was in there, he was in there before me, mind. So, and I thought, well, okay, I'll, I'll give it a go. And I wasn't really very enthusiastic, but I, I found it. And I put one or two poems out there, you know, as you do. And then I found out, because I was pouring my poetry, because I can write sometimes 10 a day. Them days I used to write 7 to 10 a day poems. That's what I did. I'm not saying they were good, but that's what I did. Now I write three a day, four a day. But anyways, and I was putting them on pop, and then all of a sudden, I was getting the awards, you know. Oh, and I, those awards were worth more, more weight than gold to me because I'd never had any yeah, praise from anybody. You wee girl. I'd never had any praise from anybody before until I came on to pop. And I was showered. I used to print my awards out. <laughs> I've still got a couple that's laminated. Now you don't get any from them. Now you just give them away. <laughs> no, I've got my. I know, I know, but it doesn't matter. But I, I've had awards, and I thought, wow, you know, wow, this is good. This, and I thanked Pratiba. I was talking to Pratiba, so you know, this is I'm having a great time. And then what happened? Oh yes, I got wrong in pop a little bit. I got told that I had to pipe my poetry down because you were only allowed three a day. Right. So I thought, fine, you know, that, that's all right, I can do that. So uh, three a day, that's what Jill did. And then, out of the blue, I'm trying to think, I got, I, I invited Greg Etzel along and one or two others, I wanted them on, you know, because I'd known, I'd seen them in pop, in Cosmos, so I wanted them in pop. So several came along and joined me, which is lovely. And I saw some old faces as well, you know. And then, or out of the blue... I'm trying to think if this is out of the blue. I got uh, this message from this person that I knew she was a founder of Pop, you know. I think you called her Annette Topley. Does that ring any bells? No. No? <laughs> well, anyways, I didn't really know this lady, you know. Mm. So I had this message saying, on, you know, it was just 
will you be a moderator in pop? And I thought, what, me? What for? Why me? So my husband says, no, I don't know about this, mine. I don't think, no, 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 no. And, you know, and I thought, oh. I quite fancy that, but I don't know if I could cope. So I messaged her back and I says, you know, I don't know. I'm not really very good at grammar and all the rest of it. And she was very encouraging from day one. I have to say this in her topley. She was just, she had me up on a pedestal, really. So I agreed to be a moderator. And then a little while down the line, I was, you know, putting my stuff on. And then she asked me to be an admin. And I thought, an admin? Me? No. So I refused. I says, oh, I'm not that keen. I'll just stick with... And you know what? She wouldn't take no for an answer. This and that talk. This is a quite determined character, mind. If you, if you get to know this woman, she's yeah. very determined, you know, because she's, she's passionate, you see. The passion yeah. of poetry. So that's my story. There you go. It's I true. You when I see something in somebody else, I do. I kind of horn them in and say, oh, come on, you can do it. I even uh, got Alan Johnson to be administrator for about 23 hours, I think. I don't think he made it 24 hours. Yes, he didn't last long, did he? He didn't. Um, and yet he's so active. I mean, he's very active wow. in it, and he, and he was okay with that. He just doesn't want to be committed and you know have to do that. Uh, that's right. thing. He's got his he's own doing stuff. He's doing his own thing, isn't he, really? He does his own thing marvelously. He doesn't have time for it, which I, I would tell him the same thing. I don't have time yeah. for it. Yeah, that's um, true. Yeah. Any more questions there, please? Yeah, I'm going down here. It says, um, such a moving piece, a Ned valuable moral lesson. I guess we're talking about Ned. Awesome poem. Wow. Then it says, I love the poem Ned. Um, it was the first time I heard Alan. It was just a wow. That was fabulous. And that, oh, um, wow. my only pet peeve with Alan, he did a marvelous job with Ned. He does do really, a marvelous job with everything he, just, he touches. But he, like he gold. but he did not title it wrong. He just oh, called it Ned. And it's, oh, the ballad. It's the ballad of Ned. The ballad of Ned, yes. So every time I, I, I yeah, see that, I say, it's really the ballad of Ned. It's not Ned. Yeah. There's Ned there. But he's a man, um, and men, men can be awkward. Well, we are on too much, Venus. Too much we are on Venus. Water. He just wanted to shorten it to Ned, which yeah, you know. but no, don't. It's a ballad of Ned. That's that's it's beautiful. But then again, you know, it's Ned. So if you say Ned by itself, you know, no, what you're talking about. that's no good, is it? No, that's that doesn't. No, no I think if you say Ned, if you say if you say Ned, that people know what it is. It's kind of like Cher or Prince or you know, you just say Ned. You know what it is. <laughs> yes, I see what you say. Yes, it stands out. It's unique. Yes. Um, then it talks about I love the mountains, me too. I had a friend had round. Um oh. are you more are you more nervous interviewing others or being interviewed? Oh, that's a good question. Thank you for that. Who was that from? Um, I you. don't know who oh. that was. Can the person wait a who second, wrote wait that, a second. please put Hold the on. name on the end of that so we know who that yeah, was? Yeah, everybody from. needs to put their name or change yes. their settings so their name will come up, but uh yeah, it doesn't have that's so, do you, do you, do you see it now? Do you see it? Um, are you more nervous interviewing others or being interviewed? But it doesn't tell me who it's from. I know, but look at I didn't know you could do that. Look what I'm finding yes, out about Yes, I can about see you. that now, but I just um, can't so see anything the else. Answer, the answer to that is that um, I don't feel nervous either way, really. I don't get nervous very often. No. Um, I rarely I feel do, nervous. but not with you. I'm yeah, comfortable yeah. with you, but I do get nervous. Yes. I usually try, um, I always tell people anxiety is energy. You just need to channel into something else. But, um, I, no, I, I, I really am not nervous about it. I think, um, I'm very Happy. open. I'm very, I'm very open. So, what are you going to ask me that I'm not? It's going to make me crumble. I mean, I'm truthful. So, I was um, going to ask you, are you enjoying? Have you enjoyed your interview with Ed Tarpley? I've enjoyed it, Jill Tate. Oh, thank <sighs> you. Well, that was my. I know how you feel in that. I went to 10 different schools too. Somebody else did. You're such a beautiful, talented lady, and that a pure pleasure to know you. Wow, thank you. Um, you are a wonderful lady. Wow, amazing. This is lovely and amazing. I wonder if they're talking about my 
uh, Broken Dreams one. Um, this is lovely. An amazing question for Annette about the grocery. Uh, Greg was there. No. Uh, Mike Dulake says. Oh, hello, Mike. Hi, you're talking oh, about he's, he's the one who said um, about the interviewing or being interviewed. But I don't like being, I, I don't mind being interviewed. I've been interviewed actually several times. Oh, right. And okay. I, not on pop. Have you been interviewed on that, pop? Not, not, like, not recently, I haven't been. Oh, but I'm, okay. You know, when I was new in the community, I was interviewed a lot, a lot. Oh, a lot. wow. Right. Okay. And, um, I think that um, I feel very comfortable with it and, and um, usually spontaneous. I don't need to know questions ahead of time, you know, mm -hmm. that type of thing. If I don't have an answer for it, I guess I'll just say I'm I trying know. to rattle my brains to think if I've missed anything important out because this is such an exclusive interview. Um, and it says, thank you, Jill, from Greg Etzel. I always will be grateful for you helping me get into Pops. Yes, very I did. Good. Pratiba, very good. Yes, I have to be the same with Pratiba because bless her, she was the one that introduced me to pop. Yeah. And, you know, goodness knows how long. You know, I mean, how many years? Would you say two years, pop? You think it's been about two years ago when you started pop? When I started pop? Yes, yes. When was it? It's was been it two over years? two years. We just had our two year anniversary at the end of May. Yes. Yes, no, so I wonder how many, I, I mean, I don't want to crystal, I haven't got a crystal ball, but I wonder how many more years, you know, mm. how is it going to end up? How many people are we going to have in pop? Is it going to hit the 50K mark? Um, wow. I, think, I think so. I mean, we have steadily went up. Um, typically, our average has been 350 a week pretty consistently. That is amazing. We had two um, months recently. Our two weeks recently where we had a thousand people each week. Never. We I didn't out. realize that in there. Yeah. Yeah. We had a thousand people. That's just unreal. It's, un it's, it's, you mm. can't really imagine that happening with any site. No, it's, it's, it's been, um, very, but I mean, typically, very active. Yeah. I mean, we, we go up, usually it takes a month to go up to the next number. Well, a, month, a month's just a month. It's, it doesn't take long, does it? Well, we're almost at we're almost so, at 30,000. So, yeah. Annette, we're doing something right then, aren't we, to the community out there and to the world, really? Yeah, and I think that it's just important that, um, you know, even though pop is getting bigger, because there's some that are, I mean, there's, you know, a few poetry sites that, couple not many but i've seen one like fifty thousand, one seventy thousand. i don't know how long they've been around but wow so um, i haven't seen those i've never seen them yeah there's a couple like that i think there's a facebook site um wow site that's Is been there around. Really? it has like 50 or seventy thousand. Hmm? do they have competitions like us no are no. they similar no 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 i well, don't what keeps them I'm, well, it's, it's probably been around for a long time. I'm not sure. Oh, when it, okay. in, I'm not sure when the inception was, but I um, mean, to me, it's um, important that we still have a very hands-on feeling and that we do what we're doing as far as having contests or or engaging with our members and you know things yes, like which that. We do, um, and I mean, we have done lately with you with your interviews. It's just been marvelous because even for me, because. You know, there's people that, yes, you know, even in the admin, I didn't feel as though I knew them. And I'm going to get to know them a lot better now with your interviews. It's marvellous being able to, oh, you thank know, you. Thank you. Well, hear people talking and, and, you know, their attitudes on things. It's just yeah. absolutely yeah. tremendous. It's a personal one-to-one -one and it's lovely. Yeah, yeah. Well, I... Um... I certainly encourage all of our admin to be interviewed, but I can't make yeah. people do it. So I think they um, will. I think they will. I think yeah, they will. eventually they will. I'm, I mean, I've, I don't know if you see my schedule, but I'm already yes, I have. A day and two. I have. Well, I've got even more since then. So it's yeah. it's quickly filling up, and yes. um, because I'm you know yes. starting to take members and things. Yes, like that. they'll be able to take members. Yes. Yeah, I am. I, mean, I know there'll be a lot of members ever so keen. Yes. Yeah. And I'm I'm not sure how we'll do with the, with the difference in the languages, though. That's the only worry I've got because oh. everybody, you know, that's the only thing. 
It's difficult. Well, they have to be able to speak English. Yes, um, it is difficult. Yeah. yeah. And um, what I think I'm going to do this uh, weekend actually is um, hold a, a contest. or I haven't figured it out yet. Okay. I'm somehow going to hold something where the um, top maybe three or five people will get interviewed. Um, you know, I you know I don't know what else. Is it just for members? Yes, members uh, only. Members yeah. only. Oh yeah, yeah. Of course, members yeah. only. Yes. So I'll probably do something. Where I'll hold a contest, probably just for a short period of time, because you know the influx will be probably large, and I'll yes. say the top five people um, are, are chosen will be. That would be the reward. Yeah. Yes. Excellent. Oh, wow. Watch this space, everybody. That sounds interesting. Mm. Very good. Excellent. Any more questions? How many people are on that list? I wish I could um, see we got, we got, um, Greg is here and Michael Dulake is here. And, is um, you up there? Yeah, Michael Dulake um, here. here is Kathy here. there? Kathy Jo. I didn't see Kathy Joe. I don't know where she's at. Oh, she must be busy tonight. Is Sai there? Uh, um, I don't. I didn't see Sai. But see, I can't tell the names unless right. they um, put the. Um, Everybody needs to put the name. Yeah, write the people, name so I can see who is there. A couple of people have figured it out. Um, well, I, have I have to figure out how to. Uh, 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 here, wait a second. Um, let me see. Thank you from Jill. Thank you, Jill, from Greg Excel. Yes, I will always be grateful for your help getting me into pops. I know that, Greg. We say good night and good morning every day of life with an email. Oh, not a lot of people know that, but that we do. We say good night, Greg, and he'll say good night, Jill. Hope you have a lovely day, and I'll say the same to him. And then in the morning, it's good night. It's good morning, Jill. Hope you have a lovely day, and I'll say good morning, Greg. Hope you have a lovely day. And that's just an email. Isn't that? That's absolutely what we do, Greg and I. Thank you, Jill, for this opportunity. Oh, it's been marvellous. Um, it's been beautiful. I've thoroughly enjoyed your company, dear. Oh, it's a pleasure thank as you always. Thank you ever so much for agreeing to me interviewing Annette Topley. Um, it's been beautiful. Love you, Jill. Uh, love you more. Hi, darling. Thank you, everybody. I hope you've enjoyed. Bye. Bye-bye.